Alright, you have found it. It's the area's most in-depth weather forecast video. We call it Weather for Weather Geeks, and it's Tuesday evening, the fourth day of June in 2024. It was a hot one today. When you factor in the temperature and the elevated humidity, it was probably the most uncomfortable afternoon of the season so far, but we don't have a lot of days like this coming our way again anytime real soon. We did 86 at the airport today after 80 yesterday. Uh, that uh, cool Sunday really kind of sticks out because, you know, three out of our first four days of the month have actually been warmer than the average, despite, you know, kind of the perception being that we've been in a pretty cool pattern of late. Yeah, the dew point has been elevated. 67, the 7 p.m. dew point at the Youngstown Warren Regional Airport. You know, anytime dew points are up in the 60s in our climate zone, most people think it's pretty muggy outside. We think no, nothing of this if we lived in Orlando, but in Northeast Ohio and Western PA, dew point of 67 is pretty darn high. It makes the air mass feel pretty soupy. Seven o'clock temperatures, 80 Sandy Lake, 86 in Youngstown, and 82 down in Lisbon here in the early evening hours on this fourth day of June. Again, it feels a little more like, you know, kind of midsummer rather than early summer. It's been kind of interesting watching an outflow boundary. Uh, we had some storms that bubbled up in the higher terrain in su far southern Pennsylvania and down into Maryland earlier on, and they kicked off these outflow boundaries this afternoon. These are little mini cold fronts, and you know, as of this recording, we still have one lonely shower being kicked off by this outflow boundary. It's in southern Lawrence County, even uh, perhaps uh, some pea size hail and maybe a clap or two of thunder coming out of this around the Elwood City area, mostly south of Newcastle as of 7.09. It'll be interesting to see where this tracks. You know, these things are kind of unpredictable. If this thing continues to ride kind of along this, outf along this outflow, you know, might we get a renegade quick downpour in Newcastle, in New Middletown, in East Palestine? It's going to be possible um, as we go through the rest of the 7 o'clock hour. Just, you know, again, a reminder, these outflow boundaries, they can be tracked on the radar sometimes. Uh, the you know, there's probably a shelf cloud, a decent shelf cloud with this, one of those kind of lower hanging clouds that oftentimes delineates the edge of rain cooled air. And again, these are kind of mini cold fronts that can tick off uh, some isolated shower and thunderstorm activity. Most of the organized thunderstorm activity on this Tuesday evening, though, is across the deep south, and a severe thunderstorm watches out in parts of the Plain States. All right, our focus for tomorrow will be on late afternoon, especially into the evening. If you watched Weather Geeks last evening, I speculated that when this became the day two severe weather outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, they would introduce a level one risk, and they went ahead and did that, as I expected, for just about the entire state of Ohio and into western Pennsylvania. This is for Wednesday and into Wednesday night. I don't think this is going to be a big severe weather day across the region, but I do think there will be some pockets of strong winds that uh, try to accompany some storms that come east. And there's just enough wind shear up above our heads that they did also introduce a 2% uh, tornado uh, area, basically meaning there's a 2% chance of a tornado within 25 miles of any point on the map in this dark green area. And this encompasses a good chunk of Ohio and extreme, extreme western Pennsylvania as well. Again, I don't think the chances of a tornado are very high. 2% is not a very big number, but it is something that gets our attention whenever uh, we have just enough ingredients to introduce that 2% area uh, across our part of the country. So we're looking at mostly 7 p.m. to 10 p.m., I think. Now, before 7 p.m., yes, there could be a passing shower or two morning and midday. Might even be a renegade thunderstorm here and there in the afternoon, but I think a lot of the afternoon will be dry. It's mostly towards sunset, on either side of sunset, by about an hour or so. Uh, that we'll be keeping a close eye on some convection approaching from the west. Here's a model depiction of our Wednesday. Again, I could have drawn a warm front lifting through in the uh, morning hours, and that's what uh, touches off perhaps a hit or miss shower morning midday. I think the sun's going to be out for at least parts of the afternoon, though. Notice our model just does not show much overhead for a lot of the mid and late afternoon. If you have outdoor plans, um, say between 1 p.m. and 6 or 7 p.m., a lot of that time is probably going to be dry. I can't rule out a passing shower or a storm, but by far and away, the higher rain chances will come as we head towards sunset Wednesday evening. Here, we'll stop the clock right around sunset or just after. Here's 9.30, 10 o'clock. That's a line of thunderstorms pushing through. And again, this may have some pockets of pretty strong winds in it, and there's a non-zero tornado risk associated with that. As we go into the day Thursday, the cold front's out to the east, so it's going to be a cooler, less humid day on Thursday. And while there will be some sun, it may be kind of self-destruct sunshine. What I mean by that 
is if we get enough sun with a lot of cold air aloft, we've got a, a pretty good trough about to pivot through the Great Lakes with plenty of cold air aloft associated with that. You get enough sunshine, it heats the ground, it heats the air, the air rises into that really cold air aloft, and you get clouds bubbling up. And I do think we can have one of those kinds of days on Thursday, and as a result, we, we will allow for a spotty midday or afternoon shower. Kind of a similar idea as we go towards Friday and the weekend. There's no washouts in this forecast, but a broad cyclonic flow underneath the trough of low pressure around the Great Lakes. This is going to be kind of an unstable setup, and especially from about lunchtime into the afternoon hours, both Friday and Saturday. Might there be a sprinkle? Might there be a shower? Outside chance of a thunder shower? Yeah, um, but you know, don't cancel those outdoor plans because of that forecast. It is going to be cool, though. I mean, temperatures will struggle at the end of the week and the start of the weekend. It will come with drier air, though. So the dew points crash down from the 60s into the 50s Thursday and kind of settle into the relatively comfortable 50s for the long haul heading into next week. All right, speaking of next week, we got some interesting changes coming up in the longer range. Now, I think June may be kind of neatly split in half. The first half of June, with the exception of days like today, largely not that hot. But the second half of June may be a different story. Here's the jet stream coming up this Saturday, coming up uh, four days from right now. Pretty deep area of low pressure over the Great Lakes. This is going to keep the heat away. The heat will be centered out west for the short term and the medium term as well. But we're going to fast forward this model depiction to a week from Saturday, so all the way up until June 15th. Notice what we have going on here, a trough trying to dig into the west. Our ridge starts making some eastward progress, and I think this will be advancing heat right around mid-month, and that will probably set the stage for a much different second half of June than the first half of June, again with the exception of a day like today. The first half of June, not really looking all that hot. In fact, it'll be cooler than the average just about every day from, oh, Thursday through Sunday or Monday, perhaps even into the middle of next week. Um, but as we head towards the middle of the month and into the second half of the month, I do think that that ridge will kind of exert its influence, not only here locally, but across a lot of the middle of the country, a lot of the Corn Belt. Uh, it looks like a pretty warm, if not hot, pattern coming up as we go into the second half of June. And I do expect that pattern to kind of win the day for a lot of our summer season once we get through this first half of June. In the meantime, we'll be keeping an eye on the model trends for our storms Wednesday evening. Make sure you're following me on social media. We'll do live streaming coverage Wednesday evening if needed. I will see you next time here on Weather for Weather Geeks.